Today's green list is going to be my attempt to convince you that the Celtics just wrapped up one of the greatest seasons in NBA history. I preface it by saying this is not college football. They don't make their own schedule. They did not have any say in how good or bad the Eastern Conference was. They didn't have any say in who they played in the playoffs or who got hurt and who didn't. All they did was play the 101 games that wound up on their schedule and win 80 of them. Here are the top five dominant Celtics stats today presented by Sherwin-Williams. Number five. Including the playoffs, the Celtics played 101 games. They had a lead of at least 20 points in 50 of them. 50 out of 101 games, they led at some point by at least 20 points. In the last 25 seasons, the only team with more were the 2017 Warriors, the KD Cheat Code Warriors, a.k.a. the Unfairly Good Warriors. The Celtics are next on that list in the last 25 seasons. It is staggering. Of the 101 games the Celtics played this season, they were favored in 96 of those 101 games. Number four. Next, the Celtics won 15 more games than any other team this year when you combine the regular season and the playoffs. The Timberwolves, by the way, finished next at 65. The Celtics are the sixth team ever to record at least 15 more wins than anyone else in a season in NBA history. They beat everyone. They went 53 and 13 against the East. That was the best record in the NBA. They went 27 and 8 against the West. That was the best record in the NBA. Like you said, they didn't make their schedule. They just played their schedule and they beat everyone on their schedule. Yeah, I, th- this is really good stuff. Number three. At number three, the Celtics are the 14th team ever to win at least 80 games in a season in NBA history. The 14th team ever to win at least 80 games when you add up the, the uh, regular season and the playoffs. Their winning percentage of 792 is the second best in a season in Celtics history. Should I assume the 86 Celtics are the only one better? That's correct. And the 86 Celtics are considered by a lot of people to be the best team ever. Maybe the greatest team ever assembled. Not the greatest Celtic team, the greatest team. Bill Walton came off the bench. Bill Walton was the sixth man on that team. Larry Bird was the MVP that year. They had peak Kevin McHale, peak uh, Robert Parrish. Dennis Johnson still in his prime. Danny Ainge. Again, Walton coming off the bench. That's how good that team was in 86. The Celtics second only to them in franchise history. Number two. Number two, incredible stats on the Celtics dominance this year, including playoffs. They outscored the the teams they played by 10.7 points per game, almost 11 points per game. That is the fifth best Points per game differential in a season in NBA history. Do you happen to have the top four in I front of you? I sure do. Who are they? The 71 Bucks. Champions and one of them, and that's, that's El Sindor. The 2017 Warriors. The Cheat Code Warriors. The 96 Bulls. 72 and 10. And the 72 Lakers. That, that's the West team that finally won with Chamberlain. Okay, so that's pretty good. Royalty. Yeah, that, that's NBA royalty. That, that's the company they keep. Wow, this, this is a really good list. Number one. At number one, the Celtics had the most 50-point wins this year with three, the most 40-point wins this year with four, the most 30-point wins this year with 10, and the most 25-point wins this year with 17. Each of those are the most in a regular season in NBA history. They won more games this year by 50, by 40, by 30, by 25 than any other team ever had in the history of the NBA. It's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. This team was remarkably good. And don't tell me... They were remarkably good. (laughs) I'm not going to lie to you. This list was put together for me. I'm reading some of these for the first time. This is gold. That is that is the most incredible collection of statistics I have seen in a long time. Well done, Cam. If you're going to tell me it's because of their path to the finals or because the East was down this year, I'm here to tell you, well, I'm not going to say that you're wrong, but the numbers say that you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Basketball Reference has a stat that they use called simple rating system. What it takes into account is your average point differential and 
combined with your strength of schedule. It, it accounts for both. It accounts for both. And if you look at that list, this, this Celtics team is the fifth best of all time behind, again, the 71 Bucks, the 96 Bulls, the 72 Lakers, and the 2017 Warriors in a slightly different order than we just did. However you want to slice it, this Celtics team is one of the most dominant champions in the history of the NBA. Yeah. And, and they... <laughs> so how do we quantify that? So, so for what it's worth, because Cam did put in here, they're the fourth team to win a title without beating a team in the playoffs that had at least 50 wins or had more than 50 wins in the regular season. That was true of the 71 Bucks. It was true of the 76 Celtics. And it was true of the Nuggets of last year. All right, so maybe that really is a good question. Do we diminish the accomplishments of this year's Celtics in any way based upon their path to a title? We do not. Uh, they went 16-3 and three in the playoffs. 16-3. Right. and three. You just told me that the 86 Celtics are one of the best teams you ever saw. They went 15-3. They went and three. Granted, these Celtics didn't have to face Michael Jordan. But these Celtics... By the way, th those Celtics swept Michael Jordan. That is true. Uh, these Celtics had an individually dominant run this postseason that I think we underestimated, that I underestimated. This team was great. They were so great that it was an event when they lost. It was an event when they won, and it wasn't as pretty as we wanted it to be. The ultimate sign of respect. Here's the one thing I will say, that three hurts them historically. Two is the magic number. Right. There are a lot of teams out there. We did the list of it last week. There are quite a few teams that finished with only two playoff losses. There's a small handful that only lost one. The, 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 set, the aforementioned Warriors, that the only game they lost was when they were was up game four against in the Cleveland, finals. Yeah. And, 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 and the, uh, the Shaq Kobe Lakers. Yes, the 01 team. The 01 team. The Fofo the, the Fo Sixers only lost one, but there was shorter series then. Mm -hmm. um, they played one fewer series. Like that, that team, they went f uh, four. Oh, five, they oh, went right? 12 and one. Yes, this Celtics team went 16 and three, which is the ninth best individual playoff record right. of all time. That hurt them. 16 mm -hmm. and two. If they had wrapped it up, it did with a sweep. They also would have then had the only team ever to sweep the conference finals and the finals. Yes, back to back. That would have sweeping this thing would have made a little bit of a difference. And it would have been a delicious eighty and twenty uh, on the history. On the exactly right. It would have felt so. It would have like fit in like that final piece into a jigsaw. It would have been puzzle. perfect. Cam, do you take anything away from the Celtics because of the path they didn't have to take? to win this championship. I think it, it prevents them maybe being in the in the top three or so, but I don't think there's any top ten list or so that can't land this team on it. They 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 were favored to win the championship when the year started, and they never stopped being favored to win the championship the entire season. They ran the entire season from pillar to post, and I know we'll never know this, but I said it earlier, this team was not losing to a healthy Joel Embiid Sixers. This team was not losing losing to a healthy Knicks team. They weren't losing to a healthy, uh, you know, Jimmy Butler or Donovan Mitchell or Tyrese Halliburton or any of the guys that got injured. They might have lost a, a game or two along the way. So if you want to take a little bit away just from where they rank in the in the hierarchy in history, you can. But just because they had to play those teams and thoroughly destroyed all of them, I don't think takes anything away from it. So, um, I think I think they, you know, like Cambo said, every time they lost is when it was an event. Right. We, we overreact, overreacted to like a game two loss. They just had a bad game and then kicked everyone else's butt the rest of the way. We're like, oh, why do they always lose these games that they're not supposed to? Like they did it a couple times this playoffs, like what happens a lot of other teams and. For the rest of the time, they destroyed everyone. So I don't think it takes too much away from them. Greeny Live at the Seaport brought to you by Patron. Perfection starts with Patron. Bubba, let me bounce this idea off you. I, I, as anyone who listens to the show knows, I make a distinction between best and greatest all the time. And one review, if I may make as an aside, one review of Got Your Number that really bothered me was a reviewer suggesting that that was... Um, that, I, that I was cheating hmm. by, by calling one person the greatest and another person the best, even though I explained it. And that really rubbed me the wrong way. That bothered me because I think that distinction is so clear, so clear. Like LeBron James is the most accomplished basketball play, NBA player that ever lived. That does not make him, in my opinion, the best. The, the greatest and the best do not always go together. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback that ever played. I don't think he's the best. I don't think it's so hard to, to, to understand the distinction between those two things. So, Bubba, hear me out on this. Right. I'm going to make a similar statement about these Celtics. 
Mm -hmm. The Celtics belong in the conversation with the greatest teams of all time because of what they accomplished. Every team only exists if you're going to do these things in the context of any one season, which is what we're doing. They only exist within the context of that one year. So we're talking about the 17 Warriors, the 96 Bulls, the 72 Lakers, whatever other team you want to put into the conversation, they only exist within the framework, within the context of that year. Within this individual year, the Celtics were dominant enough in their year that they absolutely compare favorably with practically any team ever. They are on the list of the greatest NBA champions ever. Now, are they the be- are they among the best? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I wouldn't put them even close. I, I think if-, if you lined them up against those 17 Warriors, against the-, the best of the Shaq and Kobe Lakers, against the best of the Bulls teams, against the Larry Celtics, against the, uh, the uh, Magic Lakers, would they beat? No, I don't think they would beat any of them. But that they didn't have to. That's my point. Those teams weren't standing in their way. They weren't right. competing with them. So what I'm trying to say is there is a difference between best and greatest. Sure. I don't think they're one of the best teams I ever saw. But they are one of the greatest champions in the history of the sport. And right. I think those are two different things. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think that I don't anyone would, agree, would disagree with if you were to you know have them play five on five against any of these other greatest teams ever. They probably wouldn't win those games. But that, that's not their issue and that's not their fault because they won all the games they had to this year and I'd also like to throw out I think something that not I haven't really heard a ton so far today is all season people were bashing Joe Mazzulla I think he deserves some credit too because all I heard all year was you know this guy is he's not a good coach doesn't know what he's doing and he he got thrown into a pretty ridiculous situation obviously with the Udoka thing he was a pretty a brief assistant the other, the, the, all he's always done there is win. He's got a 73 win percentage with the Celtics. So I think Missoula deserves a ton of credit with with the Celtics. Uh, you know, and obviously he's got a, a stacked team, but still he's he's gotten the conference finals and he's won an NBA championship. He's coached for two seasons. He's got a 73 percent win percentage. This guy's this guy might be a pretty decent coach. <laughs> so are you saying you think we are underselling? Missoula. Well, I just think all year he was getting criticized because I think a lot of time this people were saying, "Oh, the Celtics aren't very good. Missoula doesn't really know what he's doing. He's not very. He's not a good coach. He's not a good coach." And now, people, no one's saying anything about him now. I just no, think no, no. I mean, winning means the ultimate. You know, in your face, right? Winning the championship means the ultimate. You need to shut yeah. up now. No, I mean, there's I've been there, you know, there been exa- obviously you know Vogel won there, but you know, obviously there have been examples of people might win, and you know, he might get fired in another year. You know, you never know. But but, but, but the point I'm making is. Some might look at it and say, boy, did he step into, because of the issue that Ime Udoka found himself in or created for whatever the right words are to describe what happened with him, which I'm still not a thousand percent sure. I'm totally clear on what <laughs> yeah, happened. I don't know if anyone is. But but whatever it is, that that Missoula found himself in a great spot. Well, I, th- I think he did, but I think we also kind of thought like he didn't really know what he was doing because he was, he was barely an assistant. And then he, it's not like this guy was a coach beforehand. I guess that's my Second point. row Joe? Well, yeah. I think he grew a lot this year because he, yeah, went, he did not coach point. well in that Miami series last year, so he deserved criticism. I think it might have been overblown, as as is a lot of things. But, you know, now that he's won, it, those a lot of those questions go away. 